As people join us, I will extend a warm welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Ricky Bevington. I'm president of the World Affairs Council of Atlanta. As we respond to the Russian military assault on Ukraine, the council is a nonpartisan membership and grant supported organization. And our mission is to provide a forum for informed discussion of the global affairs that impact Metro Atlanta. You can find information about becoming a member of the council at our website, wacatlanta.org. And your membership does support programs like the one in which we're going to be participating today. This week, we are bringing you on the ground perspectives from inside Ukraine as the Russian military invades that sovereign country. Thank you so much for joining today's conversation with Major Pablo Kazan. I'd like to extend a special uh, welcome to Bernard Taylor, who's chair of the board of the World Affairs Council of Atlanta and Mark Becker, Dr. Mark Becker, former president of Georgia State University. Also welcome to our friends from other World Affairs Councils around the United States, Hilton Head Island, Global Ties in Arizona, we have people joining us from around the world, members of the university community. We have students, we have members of Atlanta's corporate community. Thank you all for being here for this very important conversation. I will briefly introduce our speaker today. Pablo Kazan is a Ukrainian ecologist and expert in energy and green economy projects. Kazan established a non-governmental organization, the National Defense Foundation to support Ukrainian soldiers fighting in the war in Donbass. And for today's conversation, Major Kazan joins us as a Signal Corps officer in the Armed Forces of Ukraine. We are so pleased you are here. Thank you for joining us, Major Kazan. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you very much for organizing such conversation. It's uh, really important for us because uh, your support is really crucial. Uh, we believe and it's very understandable now for the all the world that this war is not just a war between Russia and Ukraine but this war is between Russia and civilized world mm. and we're going to get into the roots of this war major Kazan I will invite our audience to submit questions using the Q&A function please be brief I will have a couple of minutes of conversation with Major Kazan and then I will open it up for questions. We'll get to as many as we can. Americans are certainly very eager for information right now. Major Kazan, without putting you or members of the Ukrainian Armed Forces at risk, can you tell us where you are right now? Uh, I am now in the regional staff, uh, city of Dnipro. And um, the situation now is the, in the region is under control. Okay, I'm gonna ask my team to put up a map just to help our audience place you geographically. Uh, we are seeing today that Russian military forces are advancing through the Southern, particularly the Southern part of the country on the Black Sea. And Major Kazan, can you help us understand on this map where you are? Uh, we are in the city of Dnipro. This is it's called Dnipropetrovsk here on this map. It's old map, it's the old name of the city. They're called Dnipropetrovsk. And uh, this is on the river Dnipro. And uh, this is a central eastern part of Ukraine. So for our audience, there, there's the big word Ukraine in the middle. And if you just go down and to the right, you'll see Dnip Dnipropetrovsk, yes, yes it's, it's right. old name of this city, yes. Okay, and it's right there on the river, and you're close to the Donbass, how far are you? Yeah, we are very close to Donbass, and uh, we are 200 kilometers from the, uh, from the front line on Donbass. Well, thank you for sharing um, where you are. I see that you have colleagues there in these, the offices. What are you currently doing today? Uh, we are signal corps officers and uh, we are preparing and constructing uh, the intercommunications and everything connected with C4 uh, unit of our army. It's command control computing communications. I, we had a conversation with someone in Odessa on Tuesday who said that Russian forces had been targeting uh, communications towers. How good yes. is communication? between members of the Ukrainian forces right now, because you all need to be communicating. Yeah, we're doing our best and uh, we're using different channels, of course, and, and of course, different transport. 
it's a, you know that it's a very small percentage of information I can tell you, but um, I can say that everybody, our officers, uh, soldiers, surgeons and uh, soldiers involved in signal corps working hard to provide this uh, communications uh, communication as, as best as possible. Well, we're glad to hear that it's okay so far today. Do you anticipate losing communication? And uh, um, you know that, uh, of course, uh, uh, Russian military forces would like to destroy the, the all infrastructure in cities. And uh, you see in that uh, they continue destroying the city of Kharkiv. Uh, they, they targeted missiles uh, in Kiev and Kharkiv as well and also some uh, radio towers uh, also what was targeted as well. And uh, now I can give you some statistics on, on the today um, about um, uh, our fight against the Russian army. And um, the, um, the total combat losses of, of enemy uh, from uh, 25th of February to, to today's were approximately, this is according to, to our general staff of armed forces of Ukraine, uh, they lose about 9,000 people of personnel, uh, 270 tanks, uh, 900 uh, armored vehicles, it's armored fighting vehicles, it's um, about 90 artillery systems, um, about uh, our defense means, 11 our defense means, about 30 units of aircrafts and uh, about 370 um, air, um, uh, armored um, uh, vehicles and also uh, some other equipment. So the, the losses of our enemy, it's, it's really high, it's really huge. And um, this is because of the high level of professionalism uh, of our soldiers and officers. And of course, because of using very good javelins and anlaws. And this is because of you, because of, of uh, the US support and UK support. And uh, we are thanks a lot to our allies uh, for such uh, good good weapon. It's, it's really very good high technological weapon. And um, we need it much more. We need it much more. We are training our soldiers to use it. And um, there we have very good response from, from them. And um, uh, just a moment, sorry. No worries. I'll, I'll use the opportunity no, no. to just ask yeah. you if you could, uh, we're just yeah. having some technical difficulties. Yes, just, just, just a moment, just That's a moment. That's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's some urgent, uh, urgent things. Just a moment, just a well, moment. Well, you're in an urgent situation. Uh, I, I have, uh, sorry, I have an uh, urgent situation for five minutes. I've been called to the central staff. I okay. will be in five minutes. I will come back in five minutes, sorry. Okay, no need to apologize. Okay, we're gonna keep this Zoom open for five minutes. Thank you to everybody understanding this is a military invasion of a country. Major Kazan has a major role to play in the defense of Ukraine. We're gonna keep this open. Um, why don't I take a look at some of our questions uh, in the Q&A box to see if there's anything that, that might spur conversation uh, for the moment. We do have a Comment from Elizabeth Ferguson, who says your success has been an inspiration. We all wish we could do more to help. Speaking of helping, I'll tell everybody, the World Affairs Council of Atlanta is currently putting together a list of vetted charitable organizations so that we will be sending it to you via email after um, this Zoom. We're gonna clean up the video so you can share the video for those who can't join us live. And we'll be including a list of vetted charitable organizations that you can be using and please share. Um, these are organizations that are working there. Uh, they're, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding, rather miscommunication and scams that go on during world crisis as we know. These are safe places to go to contribute to the cause. And for members of our media who are on, we have a couple of reporters registered. I'll also share with you, we're gonna be providing a local media guide 
this is an opportunity for all local reporters and producers to will be providing access or information for you to understand who are the local experts in Georgia to be interviewing local organizations that are working. And we'll also be sharing that with privately with our members of the military. The World Affairs Council is here for situations, not only world crises, but every day to help local people in Georgia understand world affairs and certainly how these issues impact us. Um, we have a question from Charlie Marburger, who says, how can US students in development and security help Ukraine and the region? That is a great question, Charlie. We can probably ask Major Kazan when he rejoins us. Um, but I do think that looking at the list of vetted charitable organizations, that might be something that you and your colleagues, other students can find one that really fits what you're trying to do. We obviously have a humanitarian crisis. The tallies today, a million Ukrainian refugees right now trying to leave that country. That is a lot of people who need a lot of help. So there's ways to help in the humanitarian front. There are opportunities to contribute directly to the National Bank of Ukraine and actually wire transfer money. And this is for what Major Kazan was saying, actually equipment for the military. I know there are efforts to raise money for uh, for like uh, vests to support soldiers and volunteers. Um, and that's another effort that's going on. Uh, we have a question from Tyler Young who says, Major Kazan, what is the most valuable material NATO can provide to Ukrainian armed forces? He mentioned two pieces of military equipment that right before he left us, I made up, was about to ask him to elaborate on what those pieces of equipment are. I think if he's telling us on the ground that these are two tools of war that are working, I think that uh, I'd like to ask him to elaborate on that. So when he rejoins us, and here he yes, is. Yes, I am here. Yeah, sorry. No yeah, need to apologize. Some several stuff. Yep. Okay. Is everything okay? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's okay. Okay. Yep. Um, one of our members of our audience asked a question I was about to ask you, which was, could you please elaborate on those two weapons that you said were very helpful to the Ukrainian armed forces? What are those weapons? Uh, you mean javelins? This is the anti-tank and anti-vehicles uh, um, uh, anti weapon. It's, it's a rocket. Yeah. Okay. It's called yeah. a javelin? Javelin, yes. Javelin okay. and end lock. It's, it's very good high-level uh, uh, instruments. <laughs> right. Yeah, to, um, to target tanks. First of all, target tanks and uh, in armored vehicles. Yeah. Great. And they're, um, they're very high technological and very, very useful and, you know, very easy to use. It's, it's very, very easy to, to train uh, soldiers to use it. And uh, for this is for, for land forces. This is, first of all, for, for land sources because we have any parts of this war. We, we have land sources, uh, land forces, sorry, and we, we have aircrafts. And uh, actually, this is a big problem now in Kharkiv that uh, we, we have uh, bombing Kharkiv uh, also from, from aircrafts. And it was an information. I did not um, um, have some improvement of this information, but it was information that uh, uh, Russians uh, sent uh, some cassette bombs uh, to, to Kharkiv. What was that kind of bomb? It, it's, it's a special bombs which, which is... Uh, uh, um, is this, this is very it's, it's illegal. This is yeah, it's a special okay. bombs which, which destroying uh, the everything. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we're reading. It's, it's called, I think it's called ca cassette bombs. Maybe it's 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 another. Uh, okay. Maybe it's, well, it's, it's it, 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 yeah. I have no way of independently verifying right now, but we are seeing reports yeah. of so-called vacuum bombs. And this creates a high temperature, I'm reading the definition, reaction. It sucks oxygen yeah. from the surrounding area and it produces yeah. a larger blast, which yes. I'm assuming does more damage, but is also just scarier for civilians. Yes, and also they, they, they are using the very big bombs uh, weight uh, about 500 kilograms. And 
I want to ask you not only your reaction about civilians in a moment, but let's yeah. talk about how the Ukrainian military is set up. You have your professional military. If you could talk about how many members of the military you have. And then we yeah. have something very new, the Territorial Defense Forces, which yeah. was just set Defense up forces. two yeah. months yeah. ago. We, so talk yeah. about that, how, what the structure is. Yes, yes. We, we, we have several types of, uh, of uh, militaries military people, uh, our per personnel. Uh, first of all, we have uh, professional officers and sergeants. Mm, second, uh, we have people came from the reserve, like myself and my friends, uh, officers who uh, graduated from universities and came to the war from the reserve. So the officers which uh, haven't uh, had uh, any uh, military experience between the war, between 2014. And we have the third group of people uh, who just mobilized uh, from, from civilian society, from civil society, it's absolutely civilian people who was in the list because now is a full mobilization in Ukraine. And this is for the men from 18 and the old men from 18 till 60 maybe. Uh, sorry, it's, it's every time interrupt because this is from mobile. It's uh, from 18 to 60, I guess. Um, uh, I think, <laughs> I expect I'm right. And uh, this is a full mobilization of uh, civilian population. And this is the third part of population. And, um, um, territorial defense forces is a forces of the armed forces of Ukraine. It's a part of armed forces of, of Ukraine. And now such uh, units of territorial defense forces now are developing in every regions of Ukraine. For example, in my regions, we already mobilized two brigades of uh, territorial defense. And one brigade is already mo mobilized for the full mobilization uh, capacity. And another brigade uh, now is in the stage of mobilization. So it's about 60 or 70% of mobilization. And um, I can say that civilian people are coming to, to territorial defense. And it's really many, many people just coming and coming every day to uh, their stuff, so to the points of, um, uh, how would say, the, the territorial defense points um, receptions, where, where it's possible to sign into territorial defense. And uh, now uh, battalions of territorial defense uh, is, uh, have their training, uh, it's tactical training and uh, tactical combat casualty courses uh, um, training as well. So all kind of training to to be ready for fighting with the Russian army. And and Major Kazan, these are these are everyday people, like, like yes, teachers yes, and it's absolutely and everyday people. Yes, indeed. And this is what what I what what I told you. This is the like third uh, types of people because myself and some of my friends here, uh, officers, we already came to the war. So we, we already have this military experience and battle experience from 2014, but um, haven't this uh, military experience before. But these people now, it's absolutely civilian people, uh, teachers, scientists, managers, businessmen, um, different, different people, different age, who, who are ready now to protect our country from this madness uh, government and madness, madness country. How are you able to train civilians and what are you arming them with? Sorry, what are you? How are you able to train yes. these civilians and what are you arming them with? Uh, we are training them, yes, uh, and uh, we give them weapons. It's it's light weapon, of course. It's 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 guns, and uh, of course, it's it's not javelins. It's not uh, the uh, 
rocket equipment and so on, but it's uh, like um, just guns. Yeah. No. Uh, we had a correction from from one of, member of our audience who who said that what you were describing in Kharkiv, which is the city in the far east, the largest city yes, in the far in east, far east it's close to the border with Russia. Right, yeah. and he was saying that they were cluster bombs. Um, I again, cluster, I sorry, that's yes. what you were yes, saying. Cluster. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. thank you so much. We have some. We have just have. I'm going to just go through questions. Uh, that what I see. Yeah. Um, here's a question that I think a lot of Americans are asking: Why don't you bomb or use missiles to destroy the slow-moving convoy we see on TV? moving toward, I'm thinking that this should say key, we're seeing that long convoy, which I think we, we see on social media chatter people saying, well, that's such an easy target, just take it out. Why doesn't the Ukrainian army just take it out? Yeah, but uh, they, they, they're using the javelin and anvil to, to destroy it, yes, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a kind of tactic. I, it's it's uh, difficult to comment the concrete case because uh, we need to, to comment a concrete case. I, can, I, I don't know everything because uh, my responsibility is my region. Mm -hmm. And uh, I receiving this information from, from media. And in the case, uh, if somebody needs uh, our support or our mm -hmm. comments or um, our involving as a Signal Corps officer, they informing us why our channels and is this we, we supporting them yeah have you seen people in your community um leave are you seeing refugees leave your community uh, yes some people are leaving our communities uh, it's uh, depends uh, on 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 many cases but uh, uh, of course we, we try to support uh, also uh, civilian activity and uh, uh, protect th those people for leaving uh, our regions. And of course, as many people uh, are leaving Kharkiv because of this situation, and many people are leaving Kyiv. And this is also depends of possibilities uh, where they, they, they live, yes. But this is absolutely, it's, it's objective situation. It's, mm -hmm. Pablo, how long do you just, from the, from the ground where you are in Dnipro, you know, how long can you hold out? If you can possibly answer a question like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to, to answer this question, but we will, we will do our best. Yeah. The Biden administration has asked Congress to approve $10 million to support Ukraine. From where you sit, uh, this money would go very broadly toward humanitarian efforts and military efforts. In those two categories, what are you seeing the need for right now? Um, I think that uh, we need uh, anti-rocket and anti-aircraft equipment, first of all. And uh, we need to protect our sky from Russian air, uh, military aircrafts. And this is the, the first what we need because this is the, the most danger. Uh, we have very good forces to protect uh, our cities from land operation, from land forces operation, but it is impossible to protect from aircrafts. We have no enough capacity uh, for this anti-aircraft and anti-rocket shield. So we, we need this protection very much. Uh, uh, we need equipment, we need um, consulting, we need training, and also we need much more javelins. Uh, we need radios, we need, um, we need vehicles. So, and I think that uh, it's uh, our general staff in, in a good contact, and uh, it's uh, many people in, in different units because I'm Signal Corps officer. I know very much uh, about this, uh, the, um, the radio equipment. And this is what, what is connected to C4 unit. But um, of course, our general staff is in good communication with the 
our colleagues in your country. And that is why I, I believe that they send in this, uh, these requests. Yeah. We have a question about women. Are there women fighting on the front lines for Ukraine? Yes, yes, of course. We have many women fighting on front line, fighting in, in the cities, in territorial defense. I just received a message from my friend, a very young woman who just mobilized as a soldier to territorial defense. I have a friend, um, first lieutenant uh, who, uh, who is a officer in one unit. Uh, she is um, in the war from, from 2018, I guess. I met her on front line on platoon uh, staff, uh, on platoon, platoon's point. So it's, it's many, many women. I have many friends who are very much involved on, on, different, on different position with different ranks and soldiers, officers, senior officers, and yes. Uh, we have a question. This is a, a broader uh, civilian perspective question. Daniel asks, we know that many countries are providing weapons. However, is there a feeling by citizens in Ukraine that they're being left behind by the rest of the world. Yeah, but, uh, uh, we of course we provide a weapon. Uh, you, you mean for for civilian people? But I think the question is, and it it is more: is there a sense between you and your colleagues or civilians yeah. in your community that? that the, you know, allies should be doing more? Would you like to see them yeah. come to our, your aid in a bigger way and what would that look like? Or is that uh, not mean, even part of the conversation because you're so busy fighting your-, your, your you, you, mean, you mean providing this weapon from, from you, from our allies? Are your, are the, your allies of Ukraine doing enough to support soldiers? Are doing like enough. You? Yeah, but uh, hey, you know, it's, it's difficult to say. They always would like to have more. And uh, what I can say, uh, we, from the beginning of the war, from 2014, uh, we needed very much uh, this support. And unfortunately, to be honest, this support was very and very weak. When the Russians invaded Crimea and invaded uh, Donetsk and Lugansk regions, it was not a very much a support because many countries said uh, about some concern or big concern or deep concern about the situation. But uh, the question of uh, Budapest um, me memorandum uh, was not on the floor. And um, of course, Ukraine made this disarmament and nuclear disarmament in the beginning of our uh, independence. And uh, we kind of been under this protection of this memorandum. And um, that is why I, I believe that their, to be honest, their reaction from the West uh, is, was really very slow. And the, fortunately that we received this reaction after the bombing of Ukraine. And of course we need, um, we need this support and uh, this involving as much as possible. I believe that this terroristic country called Russia should be um, disconnected from, from any type of SWIFT, uh, Visa, Master. Every bond in Russia uh, so, should be disconnected from, from any kind of uh, such as services. And all trade uh, should be stopped. And, uh, but, um, from the other side, it is necessary to, to do something military, but we understand that the only side which can can do this military action is Ukraine because of, of international law, because of this international regulation and the NATO statute and the European Union statute. And um, if it would be possible to, for Ukraine to join in NATO now, I understand that I'm not a lawyer, I am an env environmentalist, but um, uh, I don't know is it possible, but if, if it would be possible, uh, it is really needed to, to join NATO. 
to be under protection of NATO. We have very brave uh, people here in my army, but uh, we understand we are fighting now with the second world army. Yes, this Russian Federation army, the soldiers in Russian Federation, mostly alcoholics and uh, drug users, but uh, many of them even didn't know about the invasion of Ukraine. And um, my friend, uh, uh, journalist Yuri Butusov just uh, arrived from city of Kharkiv. And um, I just looked on some uh, parts of uh, Russian radio stations and some patches from Russian soldiers. But many of, uh, of these soldiers even didn't know about what happened. They've been informed that this, this is not an operation against Ukraine. They'd be informed that this kind of training, like a train, like military training so somewhere. And uh, many of them uh, absolutely, you know, like, like zombie. And uh, I don't know what these people use what kind of chemicals they, they're using. But uh, of course, this army, the, the moral, uh, situation, the moral condition of the, this army is very, very low, of course. The level of training of this army is, is really very low. They have no very good, very high technological equipment, but it's the very huge personnel that they, they have many tanks, many aircrafts. They, yes, this tank is not possible to compare these tanks with American tanks or British tanks or vehicles, for example, armored vehicles, or, or even rockets or missiles, yes. But they have big number of, of this so, equipment. And so that is why it is really difficult for Ukrainian army. If you, if you see on the map and on, on the, um, um, the territory of Russia and the territory of Ukraine, and it is really possible to understand that Ukraine is really small. Yes, we sure. are the biggest country in Europe, but we are really very small. The territory of Ukraine is really very small in compare with territory of Russia. That is why, of, of, of course, we, we need this protection from NATO. Yes, I, I understand that our NATO allies, and all our allies, not, not only NATO, but also other, other armies, not included in NATO, but they doing their best according to NATO status, according to European uh, Union uh, documents and other international law. But um, we would like to call for, for quicker procedures. And we, we, we need this um, bigger support, you know, wider support and be involved in NATO. Maybe it's a bit, uh, you know, like, like fairy tale. To, to join the NATO now uh, during the war, but this is what we need, need now. If I may uh, re just recap what I think you just said, you're saying that from what you're hearing and seeing on the ground through your military communications that Russian soldiers have a relatively low morale, are yes. not as well trained and actually don't have very good equipment, but they have the numbers to win. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That, yeah. And also, you see, if they will send all aircrafts to destroy Ukraine, not maybe not all of them are ready now. Maybe some of them, it's, it's just a, a, a metal. But uh, if they send in all, air, all um, normal aircrafts to Ukraine, it's possible to destroy it, the old territory. If they will send all personnel uh, with tanks, with armored vehicles, yeah, it's, it's possible. Just, just to, it's numbers, yeah. We've been hearing about Russian saboteurs who we, we've seen widely reported actually came into Ukraine well ahead of this. You bought apartments, uh, just sort of set up as almost spies on the ground. How big of a problem are you seeing Russian saboteurs in Ukraine? Is that happening in your community, your region? Yeah, but it's sometimes not in my region, but sometimes yes. Yeah. 
in some of the major cities, for example, Kiev, yeah. where we heard reports of that they'll put different colored lights in windows so that Russian forces yeah. know where to target, okay. um, for so, example. That's sorry, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, some messages, sorry. Yep. Sure. Um, I'd like to stay on the theme of just your perspective as a member of the military for a moment before we go back to kind of broader political discussion. Yes. Uh, we have a question from Judd who asks, what aircraft does the Ukrainian military have? It's uh, Su and, uh, and, and MiG. Those are types of airplanes? Yes, yes, yes. It's that okay. type of aircraft. It's Su and MiG. It's, yeah, it's uh, old fashioned aircraft, unfortunately, but uh, we're using it. And uh, Poland uh, is sending us some more aircrafts. And uh, this aircraft uh, is uh, convenient for our pilots. And uh, I do believe that uh, we will use them to protect uh, our sky from, from Russian aircrafts. We have another question from Gerard who asks, are the Ukraine armed forces being supplied with missile enabled drones? And if so, are they being used against the Russian convoys? Yeah, we're using drones, yes. We're using different type of drones, of course. Yeah. We, we're using Bayraktar, that, that, that most famous is Bayraktar, it's Turkish drones. And we're using other types. We have our Ukrainian drones and uh, also, um, we're receiving some uh, support with other drones from our NATO allies. We, we even be using even uh, civilian drones and we, we, we are using it very, very well. Civilian drones, wow. Yes, we're using civilian drones for, for some kind of, uh, for reconnaissance as well. Wow, okay. Yeah. We have a question from Jim who asked, to what extent have the television, radio and internet communications been degraded throughout Ukraine? Yeah, it's it's now it's uh, we have some regions uh, without uh, telecommunications. Yes, but uh, it's um, we will see. It's I don't know. It's 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 very difficult to to forecast something to to prognose what. Right. Okay. Charles asks, what parts of the Ukrainian government are currently operating in these warm time conditions? If you're able to answer that. You mean what, what territories? Well, no, I, I guess you could answer it whichever way you think the most appropriate. I think that from an outside perspective, when the capital is under attack, it's hard to wonder how politicians or just branches of government or military or governmental departments are functioning. What are you hearing in terms of just the basic functioning of the Ukrainian government? Are you able to answer okay, that? Okay, you know, it is difficult to answer, but we... we we do our best it's you know to be in, in in cooperation with everybody i am responsible for my region sure. and that there are people and officers and generals who are responsible for other regions so major kazan i want to go back to your story i spoke yeah. with you on on sunday and you said to yeah. me for me this war started in 2014 yes Tell our audience what happened in 2014 and why you it prompted you to join the military and um, just take us back to 2014. Yes, yes. Uh, up to 2014, uh, I was environmentalist and um, I am electrical engineering by training. Um, I have a PhD in statistics and um, my uh, occupation was uh, environmental engineering and uh, uh, renewable energy. And uh, when the war started in 2014, uh, I came to the war in June 2014, and I came to Sector M. It's the city of Mariupol to developing a radio network, because that time our army hadn't any uh, digital cryptic networks. So the all equipment uh, was uh, very old fashioned and we needed to develop this, um, this special networks, cryptic ne networks. And this is what, what we did there. And from the 2014, my life is changed, was changed, of course. And um, I have, um, 
Oh. Well, it looks like we've lost Major Kazan for the moment. We'll leave this open to let him reconnect. Thanks for everybody's patience, understanding that he is not only at work, but he's at work doing uh, vital <laughs> and important communications. Let me go to some of our questions to see if it might prompt a, um, a conversation. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some, <laughs> okay. some calls and something else. And um, um, so I, I came to, to the war. I, I, I also came with the artillery binocular, binocular uh, which I received from my grandfather, Boris, who, who was a, a captain, an officer, uh, and fought in the Second World War. And I, I brought this binocular. It, it was a Nazi binocular, and uh, my grandfather got it from, uh, from the Second World War. And um, now this binocular in the Museum of Holocaust. And um, then after uh, I, I spent my one year in the war, and then I spent three more years in the war and um, as a signal corps officer. And I came to, to the war as a lieutenant and uh, I was finally, I was promoted to, to major. So, and uh, my, my civilian activity, I, as I said, I'm an environmental scientist and uh, my interest is uh, most um, is renewable energy and sustainable, uh, sustainable development. I have my, uh, my papers in statistics and uh, mathematical uh, analysis and environment and engineering. And um, in civilian life, I, I am, head of science and engineering at environmental monitoring center in the city of Dnipro. And uh, I'm an author and um, creator of environmental monitoring system of, for the uh, region of Dnipro. And uh, we have very good environmental monitoring system analyzing uh, 53 indicators. And we are in, in the very good cooperation with Michigan State University with my good friend, Professor Tarabara, and with Environmental Protection, US Environmental Protection Agency, and we are in good cooperation and um, uh, exchanging the information and technologies and uh, uh, our scientific ideas, uh, doing some, some joint work together with our American partners and Czech partners, Italian partners, and um, uh, so my, my civilian life mostly on environmental issues and uh, uh, I, I also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, also, maybe you, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted to ask, um, I was actually gonna, to, I, I wanna talk to you about the environmental impact of this war yes. on Ukraine, but let's just go back to your grandfather for a moment. Why are his binoculars yes. in the Holocaust Museum in Ukraine? Uh, because, Yes, yes, yes. Because as you understand, we are a Jewish family, and uh, Hazan is a Jewish name, and Hazan means the singer in synagogue. It's very oh, old okay, family. Okay, great. Name. So, so, that is so why it must be can... it must be meaningful to you that that uh, Putin announced that he was coming into Ukraine to denazify it. What is your reaction yes, to uh, that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so we are nationalists, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yes, my I Jew and uh, Jewish family. I have many Jews. Uh, my friends now mobilized. Some of them very religious. I'm not religious, and but uh, sometimes I, even I myself, I read in Tehillim because of this situation. I've got this Tehillim from my rabbi, and. Um, so we have many Jews here, and uh, Dnipro city is this Jewish center, the U European okay. Jewish center. We have uh, Menorah center here, and uh, because this city uh, is the city of uh, Lubavitch Rabbi, and uh, we have uh, Chabad Lubavitch here. It's uh, like a movement, a Jewish movement, a re religious movement. 
So uh, that is why I sent this binocular to uh, Museum of Holocaust because we, we have a part in this museum, we have the part uh, about uh, this uh, Russian-Ukrainian war. And that is why we have some belongings from my family in this museum also belong to, to my hero heroical uh, grandfather Boris, who mm -hmm. spent uh, his uh, four years in Second World War and uh, he fought it with Nazis. And uh, he is mm, an example for me. Sure. We yeah. still have a lot of ground to cover in the last roughly 10 minutes or so that we have. So I'm gonna, um, ask you sort of some scattershot questions, but I will return yeah. to your assessment of the environmental damage that this war will yes. do in Ukraine. But, yes, yes, but it's first, a very interesting me, question. Yeah, yeah, so first let's just ask a question from Christina who asks, is Starlink helping with communications? That's of course Elon Musk's. Is that yes, helping? Yes, indeed, we need much more. Yes, we need more. very short answer. Yes, it's, it's okay. very, very much supported. We okay. need much more. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's working. Thank you very much there. indeed. Yeah, okay, thank you great. very much. It's, it's really, it's, it's super equipment. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cheryl asked, to what extent are you concerned about the use of nuclear weapons? Yeah, it's very big problem. And um, not only nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon is, is the second stage. We are very much aware about uh, damage uh, to nuclear station, to NPPs in Ukraine. We have four nuclear power plants and Russian troops are very close to Chernobyl. And nobody knows what will be happened. And this is uh, uh, nuclear reactors, which was stopped because uh, this Chernobyl catastrophe, but uh, we have sarcophag there on this uh, Chernobyl um, unit, but uh, it is possible to, to do any actions there. It's dust leaking, it's, it's a lot of uh, nuclear material there. And also concerning the function in nuclear power plant, we are also very much aware about this. So even if they will not use nuclear weapon, it is really big danger if they will be made this uh, even one NPP, even Chernobyl uh, NPP. So there are more and if, if yes, if in the case if they will use nuclear weapon, of course it's it's a catastrophe for for sure. everybody, for Europe, for the world, and it, it is necessary to, to stop them, to stop him, to stop them. Yeah. In addition to to nuclear contamination, what are the other concerns that you have as an environmentalist about the environmental damage that this war will do on Ukraine or the globe? Yeah, it's of course that the all kind of weapon are is a big dam damage to to people as well for for the environment, and um, of course it's it's possible uh, to to analyze deeply because uh, myself as a scientist, it is possible for us, I have very good uh, friends, uh, my scientists, biologists, chemists, and environmentalists who are analyzing now the, uh, this, uh, this impact. And um, even uh, we had a, a report, a small paper, about this, it was one small paper uh, about this image, but maybe we will do this to, to deeply analyze of, of, this, of this effect. Sorry. Oh, we, we lost him again. Um, in the last couple of minutes that we have with Major Kazan, I think I will be asking a lot of um, your questions about the what the humanitarian support and military support that we can be offering. Um, he may not be as plugged into that because he's busy obviously serving in the military, um, but I will ask him those questions. We have questions about, we have actually somebody from Germany who's on and asks uh, what can be done in Germany to support refugees that may be coming through. Uh, we have another question asking Major Kazan to comment uh, on what we're seeing um, 
I don't want to put words in her mouth, thoughts on the reported and videoed occurrences of Africans and Afro-Ukrainians being prevented from leaving Ukraine. We've certainly seen plenty of reporting on that. And then we have questions about how to support the Ukrainian military directly. The Ukrainian National Bank has set up a fund and they have all of the transfer, wire transfer codes there on their website that you can contribute directly to Ukrainian forces. That's, I, as I understand it, it's cash donations going straight into the coffers of the military. And again, that will be on our charitable organizations document that the World Affairs Council of Atlanta will be uh, sending out shortly, as soon as we can get it together. Um, if you haven't seen the program that we ran on Tuesday, we spoke with Donna Hanna, Dr. Hanna Schellest, she was in Odessa and she spoke to us from the Odessa perspective. That's right there on the Black Sea. Um, and I messaged with her today and she said there's two military Russian warships right on the coast and they're just waiting. Hello, Major Kazan, welcome back. Yes, yes like sorry, to... sorry. It's tough okay. sometimes, it's urgent calls and I, I have to respond. Y you have a job to do and we're so grateful yeah. for you taking yeah. a whole so hour. So talking about this damage, yes. yes. It's a very big problem, and um, I think we will continue uh, to research uh, with uh, our colleagues, partners, scientists, and writing articles. And um, yeah, okay. it's, 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 you know, it's another topic to, to talk. Yeah, it's a Great. very huge topic. Yeah, and every kind of weapon are damaging. Of course, first of all, nuclear, nuclear weapon, chemical weapon, and then other types of weapon that are going to damage the um, environment. Very much, yeah. Everybody uh, on this call has great questions. I'm going to focus now for the last couple of minutes on how people can support Ukrainians in a humanitarian and military um, level. Are you able to share with us organizations that we might contact to support you directly as a member of the military? Yeah, uh, it's it's possible to communicate me, and I will redirect to other people who are responsible for for different type of uh, uh, such kind of support. So we need we, we need a lot of support, of course, but um, it, it's a very long list. <laughs> it's uh, the, the military support, the humanitarian support, uh, the hacking support to hack. Uh, uh, Russian web site, web pages, and uh, Russian uh, in infrastructure. We need these uh, cyber uh, cyber groups to, you know, to make these DDoS attacks on their their web page, their uh, infrastructure. We need right. to to destroy the, the the their infrastructure as soon as possible, and we we need thousands of people. Hundred thousands people, uh, programmers, admins, IT uh, people who, who can do these uh, attacks to Russian infrastructure. So it's many types of support. Uh, of course, we, we need support with uh, your politicians as well to make these sanctions as quick as possible, as huge as possible, to send us uh, military equipment and weapon as much as possible, as quick as possible, to support us to join in NATO and making such some special procedures to, to join in NATO. And I know that uh, uh, our commanders, uh, General uh, Zaluzhny in good communication with General Mili, and uh, I know that they communicated often and this is high level i don't know exactly of course about this high level conversation and uh, i i can see and i believe that uh, they our high command our high our headquarters command in a good communication but uh, this is what i can say <laughs> say about what support we, we, we are need or um, and I, I did I mishear you to say that you're willing to to have the this audience contact you to offer support. I, I don't want to give out your your email address and overwhelm you. Is that what you said, or do you have another place that you'd like to send folks to help? And now the what? I just want to make sure were you were you asking the World Affairs Council to field requests and send them to you, 
to yeah you to can delegate? send it to me yes you can send it to me it's very easy yeah it's very okay. easy and and i will give you some some addresses and some contacts okay. uh, so yes a, yeah of after... course i cannot communicate with everybody okay. <laughs> yes 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 well, but i good. have okay. officers i have civilian friends here engineers and other people who are doing a great job and you know i have many friends who do a great job now businessmen for example who, who buying some goods just to 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 support yeah. our army to to buy something and uh, right. yeah okay or doing something for us yeah so what i will commit to this audience you can email us at info at wacatlanta.org info at wacatlanta.org if you have a particular way that you'd like to support and we will compile those and hopefully Major Kazan um, can direct us or connect us with organizations. Uh, as he mentioned, there's so many ways. In fact, I just put on my LinkedIn a way to donate to Ukrainian media because we need reporters on the ground with equipment to keep them safe to make sure that we're getting accurate information out of Ukraine. Major Kazan, we are going to let you go to do your many important activities today. Hey, I have Thank to go so now. Much. Okay. Yeah. We yeah, will let thank you, you very go much for indeed. the moment. Thank you very much for your country, your nation, your government. It's it's really very big support. And um, keep in touch. We'll keep in touch. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we'll let today. you go. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, for those of us still with us, you are invited to sign up for our newsletter at that website I just gave you, wacatlanta.org. We'll be announcing, of course, all of our upcoming programs. Tomorrow, we have the Estonian ambassador, Christian Prick. He's uh, joining us for an in-person breakfast in Midtown. This event is sold out, but you can join our waiting list at that email I just gave you, info at wacatlanta.org. And Tuesday, March 8th is International Women's Day. We will be celebrating with Jamil Biggio of USAID. And we're gonna be talking about how women and girls are particularly impacted in Ukraine, in refugee situations, women and girls are have special uh, issues that come up when they're in a, obviously a million people have to free, flee their country. So please join us for International Women's Day and we can learn more about the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. We're also gonna talk about Afghanistan and what we can do to support women and girls in those situations. And of course, empower women in all situations throughout the year. That is the spirit of International Women's Day. Thank you to today's behind the scenes team, our graduate students, Anna Petrova of the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies and Laura Brower of the Robinson College of Business, both at Georgia State University and stellar interns, Kanko Zonu from Georgia State and Murphy Reef from the University of Georgia. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to help, email us info at wacatlanta.org. We will see you next time.